Welcome back everybody. We are working through infant food introduction, trying to create a really healthy environment for baby and their body, but also preventing picky eating. So today we're going to be starting with our next food and that is bananas. So this is actually the first fruit other than avocado that I've introduced. So just to recap, we did uh, bone broth, so homemade bone broth, uh, beef, chicken. We've also done eggs. We've done avocado. We've done a couple different meats. So we did fish, we did uh, chicken, we've done beef, a little bit of pork. We've done several different vegetables as well, prepared very soft and kind of mashed up a bit. We've done broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, asparagus, carrots. Uh, so all those are really nutrient dense, starting to introduce those into meals as well. Trying to do a new food every three days, um, as long as she's doing okay with it, and she's done really well so far, so we're happy about that. Um, so today we're doing a banana, and the reason I choose banana is because it is really easy to digest, babies tend to like it. Uh, when you're choosing a banana for baby, you just want to make sure that it's really ripe. So you can see I got some nice brown spots on here. That means it's ripened. And as a banana ripens, one, the carbohydrates break down so it's easier to digest. They're not going to get as much gas. It's the same with avocados. But also, um, it's going to be a little bit sweeter for them, which they're going to like. And the nutritional content is higher. So as bananas and fruits in general ripen, their nutrient content increases, specifically in bananas, vitamin B6. So it makes some of those nutrients more available. So remember, we're going for nutrient dense foods, okay? Again, I'm gonna recommend organic if you can get organic bananas because they are going to uh, be a little bit cleaner. So some of the fungicides and pesticides that they spray on the fruit can penetrate the porous skin into the fruit. So if you can try to get organic, that's gonna be best. So. One of the questions might be, well, why wait to introduce fruits? Because typically it's like, oh, fruits and vegetables should be your first. Well, I start with meats because they're more nutrient dense, and I'm really trying to introduce some of those savory flavors. So kids already prefer sweet foods. I don't need to get them to like the sweet foods. So I'd rather push for the vegetables and getting them used to more bitter, sour types of flavors than just hitting up the fruits all the time. So kids will like fruits, I promise you. I remember working Working with a group of parents one time and I asked them you know what's the easiest food group to get your kids to eat and unanimously it was fruits which almost surprised me but toddlers they love fruit so really we're giving fruit for the purpose of nutrition not so much trying to get them to like fruits so I'm just going to periodically give fruits it doesn't need to be at every meal what you don't want to do is start mixing fruits with everything so putting fruits mixed in with vegetables like mashing it up together because then they're learning that all foods should be sweet you want to try to keep those separate I typically give fruits last and I don't typically at least with my older child give them with a meal I give them more as snacks because I don't want her always expecting those sweet flavors I want her to get a wide variety of other um, sensations as well so a lot of problems with like processed baby foods like puffs and cereals and you know a lot of like toddler snacks and teething biscuits is they all contain some sort of added sweetener so a lot of them now say all natural you know sweetened with juice and you look at the ingredients you're like oh it's apple juice it's sweetened it's good it's natural even if it's all organic um, but again, all you're doing is taking a nutrient poor food, so you know, a processed grain that is going to actually deplete the body of nutrition as it's broken down instead of giving the body nutrition, which is going to rob your child of nutrients, okay? And then they just add some sugar to it. So any type of sugar that's not naturally occurring in the food is added sugar, even if it's from a fruit source. So instead of giving foods that have added sugars or added fruit juice to sweeten it, let's just give them fruits because then you're getting the benefit of the fiber, all the vitamins and minerals in that fruit. I can't say that enough. Um, but we really want to focus on whole, unprocessed foods. Once you start introducing those processed foods, you start confusing the child, and then that carries on into adulthood, their ability to self-regulate and understand what their body needs nutritionally. When you start adding in sugars and salts and added ingredients that aren't naturally in the food, the body learns to expect and crave those foods. 
Okay, so then the child is always going to want sweet things. They're always going to want salty things. They're always going to want processed things. You're going to have a really, really hard time getting them to eat other foods. Okay, so let's just stick with whole fruits. And I would recommend waiting. So she's seven months now. I've waited that long to introduce any fruits. If you want to do it sooner, you can. But again, this should not be the main part of their diet. It should be more the vegetables, the meats, the, um, the protein types of foods. So at this point, you know, around seven, eight months, her protein, breast milk is not high in protein. Her protein needs are less and less met through milk and she is more needing them um, through food. So we wanna make sure meals have protein foods. Most of my meals now are starting to be more mixed. So, you know, she has a little bit of egg on her tray here. Uh, I didn't do avocado because it's usually a disaster for the video, but typically she'd have avocado with it, uh, maybe some broccoli or something. So usually some sort of uh, mixed meal, you know, getting some fat, protein, and carbohydrate from the vegetables in there. Um, and then I'm gonna just go ahead and give her this banana. So when I peel this, you know, this is nice and ripe it's really soft I'm not just gonna give this to her as she gets older I will but I'm just gonna put a little bit in my bowl here I have my fork and I'm just gonna mash it up so again super simple this is mashing very easily um, you don't have to buy jarred baby food I know it's coming I promise you don't have to buy jarred baby food to get an, an easy puree so again lazy man's puree okay so it's nice and mashed up in there and she's just gonna be able to take it right off the spoon. And she's really doing a great job of feeding herself. Actually, she kind of prefers it. So um, I'm just kind of letting her guide the process. So that's nice and mashed up. I'll see if she'll take it off a spoon. You wanna try this? So again, kids will like sweet stuff. I'm not concerned whether or not she's going to like this food, but this is the first really sweet food she's had. Mommy, you can dump that. Okay. Uh, I won't dump it, thanks. Yeah. So we'll kind of give it to her and see if she likes it. I want some it. avocado. You like that? Mm -hmm. I want some avocado on my plate. Okay, I'll get you some. Is that good? I miss so again, it's soft enough that she can get it down. It's pretty easy. Evelyn, you're in the picture. Get out. Um, and she's going to just keep eating this. So again, you kind of have to be careful, a little bit careful with fruits because they can overdo it. Um, maybe not so much at this age, but as they get older, you know, you don't, oh, they're eating so much. I'm just going to keep giving it to them. You know, it is sweeter, so make sure you're feeding them other foods, less sweet first, and then giving them the fruit. So that's pretty good. How about we put some on your tray? You can pick it up. Okay. Hold on, Evan. Hold on, you're trying to eat all of that. <laughs> eat all of it. All right, so while she's kind of going at this, I want to have a word about uh, fruit juices and beverages. So at this point, they don't really need to be eating, I mean, sorry, drinking anything else still except their breast milk or formula. Uh, that is meeting their fluid needs. And ideally, if we're, if we're feeding them, you know, whole foods, those contain water. When you start feeding processed type of, you know, puffs and grain foods, those dehydrate the body. So you might actually need extra fluid. But these are very hydrating. And see, she's just kind of feeding herself here. So yeah. she's doing a great job. So I'm just going to let her do that. Um, and then the question that we always get is, well, when can I start feeding juice? Okay, let's talk about juice. I have a very strong opinion about beverages and juice, but here we go. What you do is up to you, but this is my opinion and kind of my take on it. There is no biological need for juice. Okay, let's let that sink in. There's no biological need for juice. Juice is a culturally, cultural beverage, okay? A lot of countries drink it, but especially in the United States. It blows my mind when I walk through the grocery store and there's literally three entire aisles devoted to beverages. And one of them is water, at least half water, but most of them are sugar sweetened beverages or some sort of sweetened beverage, okay? You only need water. That is the beverage of choice, that is ideal, that is the most hydrating for the body. Now you may say, well, I'm giving 100% juice, it's organic, or you know, there's no added sugar. Okay, anytime you take a fruit and extract the sugar from it, okay, you are getting multiple pieces of fruit in that beverage, all right? So usually, I forget what it is, like 20 oranges or something to make, or 30 oranges to make a glass of orange juice. All right, no, at no point would your child sit down and eat that much fruit. So what happens, you take out the fiber, you're just taking the sugar juice portion, and you're getting a higher insulin spike, a higher rise in glucose, and then you're getting a crash. You're also teaching your child that beverages should be sweet. I can't tell you the number of adults that ask me about other beverage choices besides water because they can't 
drink it. They don't like water plain or, oh, it's all right, but I don't really like it. We expect that sweetness and that sugar. So what we wanna do is just nip that in the bud right immediately, don't even play into that. Your child, and I'm gonna say this over and over again, only has a concept of what you introduce to them. Their brains and their conception of food is only what you expose them to or their environment around them. So if you start giving them juice as a norm, okay, all you're teaching them is that juice is part of your diet and you should ask for it. And then when they're a toddler, you're fighting with them to say, you can't drink juice, you need to drink water. Yeah. They're throwing fits. I can literally count on one hand how many times she's had juice. It's probably been about three times in her entire life. It's not a part of our house. She doesn't get exposed to it. She knows what it is, kind of, but it's not really a concept to her because it's not part of our day-to-day -day life, okay? So just try early on to not introduce it. Instead of asking, when can I introduce juice? Ask, why would I even introduce juice, all right? You're just giving your kids sugar for no reason. The only justification for juice, and this is why some feeding programs still incorporated it, is because some children who are extremely picky and limited, that might be their only source of vitamin C that they're getting. So they're getting you know, some orange juice or some apple juice. However, if you're feeding your child this way and giving them nutrient-rich foods, that shouldn't be a problem, okay? So don't even bother, water is the only beverage. Even if you say, well, I just give a splash of juice in your water. Still, it's not necessary. You're teaching your child to expect sweetness when they drink beverages. It's, un it's not necessary. Their bodies need water. You need to teach them to drink water. So at this point, any beverages we're giving, you can give a little bit of water safely, okay, if you wanna give them a few sips, um, but do it out of a cup. Don't put anything in a bottle, especially not juice, but don't put anything in a bottle that's not breast milk or formula because they will chug it down. It starts confusing them, okay? So just let them take little sips of water out of a cup if you want to at this point, but again, you don't have to. Usually I start water around eight months or when they seem like they're maybe a little thirsty, if the meal a little bit drier you could potentially do it that way okay but again they should be getting enough uh, beverage through uh, your breast milk formula and they should be getting enough liquid and hydration through the food that they're eating so that's another reason to feed unprocessed foods um, and again fruits are very hydrating so some other fruits you could introduce would be like cantaloupe or mango things that are riper and digest easily um, later on around eight months we'll move into more like apples and pears and things uh, and then eventually I'll get to berries. I love berries, but you know, with all the seeds and stuff, I usually just wait a little bit on those. Um, so again, that's kind of my take on fruit. So starting with bananas, just giving it periodically, giving fruit second in the meal. So giving the vegetables meats first so that they're getting all those nutrients and then you can kind of give this to them um, to top it off. So as you can see, she really likes it. She ate a lot of it. She's kind of just feeding it to herself. You will notice at this point that you start needing multiple outfit changes a day because your child is an absolute mess after mealtime, but that's all right. Usually I put like a towel here and try to preserve it as best as possible but anyways I uh, hope that helps you think about juice and beverages a little bit differently remember what you understand about food is mostly based on your culture so you can change it you can help your kid be a well-rounded eater so we're gonna continue with more food introductions make sure you subscribe to our channel so that you can keep getting the latest updates as we move through this process you're doing it I'm doing mom.